Hello everybody, welcome to Union's Kitchen, my kitchen, the place where we're going to do some food magic and some alchemy together. Today we're looking at the noble oyster. I love these little morsels of brininess. It's like a taste of the sea and it should be. Apart from that, it's a super food and it's one of my favorite things to eat. So how do you open an oyster? If you were to bite it right here, I bet you'd break a tooth or two. What you do is you use this, an oyster knife. And you can get different kinds. Some of them are, you know, with a bigger, with a bigger guard, maybe a little bit wider, but they basically do the same function. How do you open an oyster? As you can see, the oyster opens like so. It's got that little hinge on the back, and this is the front where it filters all the water. What you do is you take your oyster knife, you hold it firmly, and with a cloth to protect your fingers, you press upon the oyster to hold it firmly against your cutting board, and you insert the knife at the back where the hinge is. Usually there'll be an opening. So, press the knife in. And twist and turn. Sometimes it's a bit hard, so you're gonna have to use a little bit of force. But as you work yourself your way into the shell, see, the knife starts to sit in the hinge, and then you just pop. Now I am using a little bit of force, so be prepared for that. Once you've popped the hinge, then you work your way down with the tip of your knife inside the shell and you cut the muscle that's holding the top and the bottom shell together. And be careful not to lose too much of that good oyster water because you can use it. Now, word of caution, not all oysters are sourced as freshly as these. There's another thing, when you open your oysters, let them sit for a little while, you can use the bottom shell as a support. Let them sit for a little while and then give it a smell. If it smells like the sea, if it smells like brininess, like fresh sea air, it's all good. If it smells like low tide, if it smells like somebody farted in the oyster or something, it's not good, buddy. And nobody should eat those. I've been in doubts a few times and I've actually eaten oysters that were on the edge. Um, it's not an experience I'm going to recommend to anybody unless you want to hug the toilet for 24 hours. Uh, so, better safe than sorry. We're going to do that again, a little bit quicker this time. So, stick your knife in, use a good deal of force until it's there. Pop. Work your way down the side, cut the muscle, open the oyster, and you can smell it right away. There you go. That one's really, really nice. And then the last one here. Oh, you see, this is one of the problems we encounter sometimes. The space where you gotta put your knife in is not really definite. Well, still gotta do it anyway. So again, use a good deal of force, pop it up. Up, oh, we broke the shell. And you just cut the muscle on the inside of the shell here. And there you go, it's free. Nice. Sometimes you get this ozone-y smell. There are different smells of the sea. It all depends on where the oyster comes from. Now these oysters, I was talking about sourcing your oysters, right? If you source them from nature, be very, very careful because you have to follow these uh, red tides the oysters can have toxins in them. In my case, I get them from a reliable supplier called Norwegian Shores, and it's a local supplier too. It's not far away. It took me 15 minutes to drive there. These guys keep their oysters in tanks where they're filtered, they're cleaned, and they're detoxed. And laboratory tests are sent once a week to make sure that the batches are good. So everything is guaranteed. When I say keep the water, 
it's for these oysters. It's for oysters where you know where they're from, where you know how long they've been in the shop, or they're just taken out of the water. Don't, please don't do it with oysters that have been sitting in the shop for ages. Some of these, they have actually been sitting in the shop for two weeks. You never know. So I would recommend having a good dialogue with your supplier and knowing everything you do about the oysters. And if you're gonna cook them, you're a little bit safer. What you do next is you empty the liquor, which is the water from the oysters, empty it into the container. together with the oyster. In this case, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use the oysters for fish soup. So I'm gonna cook them. And in this case, I want both the meat and the liqueur, because that's gonna flavor the fish soup nicely. But I have a lot of other recipes, which you are going to see on this channel, with oysters, because it's one of my favorite things to cook with, and I think everybody should eat them. Here in Norway, this kind of oyster is called the Pacific oyster. It's become a plague. Uh, people don't want them anymore, and they you know, pull them out of the water and let them dry on the beach. Well, instead of that, you can do a lot of things with them. It's good eating. Like I said, it's super healthy. It is a superfood, and it tastes amazing if you know what to do with them. So follow me on this channel for more information about oysters. See you soon.